Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Holy Cross as we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. You can find the music for today's Mass on the white sheet at all of the entrances. You can also find it on the homepage of the Cathedral website at holycrossboston.com. Click the button that says Worship Guide at holycrossboston.com. Our entrance chant, Esto Mihi, be unto me a protecting God and a house of refuge to save me, for you are my support and my refuge. For the sake of your name, you will lead me and nourish me.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I want to welcome everyone this morning to our celebration here at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross, but especially the members of the Legion of Mary who have gathered here as we commemorate a, a century of service in the Church of the Legion of Mary. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He's like a barren bush in the desert 
that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt in empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Be to God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Monsignor O'Leary, Dr. Sylvia Oe, dear fellow members of the Legion of Mary, brothers and sisters and all, it's a great joy to be with you today to celebrate this Eucharist. And when people in my generation were in school, we studied the Baltimore Catechism, which was a little book of questions and answers, and we memorized all of those questions and answers. The first question was, who made me? Well, God made me. And the second question was, why? Why did God make me? And the answer, those who were my age will remember, God made me to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to be happy with him forever. What a beautiful thing. God made us to be happy. All of us are born with that desire, that longing in our heart for happiness. Sometimes it's frustrated. Sometimes we're looking in the wrong places. But in today's gospel, we listened to the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are Jesus' promises of happiness and a compass that points our lives in a direction towards happiness. The first reading gives us a Beatitude they're sprinkled throughout the whole Bible. But in the first reading from the prophet, we heard, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. He's going to be like a tree planted by running water. 
Blessed, happy is the one who trusts in the Lord. I always say that the first and the last Beatitudes in the Gospels both have the same theme. The first one is at the beginning of Luke's Gospel where in the visitation Mary arrives at the house of Elizabeth and Elizabeth says to her, blessed are you, happy are you because you have believed. Mary is the woman of faith and that blessedness is the source of happiness for her. At the end of John's Gospel, we find the very last beatitude on the lips of the risen Christ who says to the doubting Thomas, blessed are you because you've seen and believed, but blessed are those who without seeing believe. That's us, the ones who see the risen Christ with the eyes of faith. Faith is our blessedness too. So in the Gospel of Matthew, in the Gospel of Luke, there are two lists of what we call the Beatitudes. Happy the one who is this or is that. And the lists are a little longer in Matthew. There's eight and four in Luke. But the interesting thing is that both lists begin with the same Beatitude. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit. With this, Jesus is not saying that economic poverty is the source of happiness. The spiritual poverty that Jesus teaches us with the example of his life and his teaching is a complete trust in God's loving providence, like that beatitude we heard in the first reading, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord rather than money or power or position. Jesus doesn't say in the Gospels that money is bad, but he does tell us that it can be dangerous. We can become so attracted to money that it becomes an idol for us, a false god, or it can become our master. And that's why Jesus says to his disciples, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Chesterton said, ever since Jesus pronounced those words, scientists have been trying to breed smaller camels and engineers trying to build bigger needles. But the poverty that Jesus is talking to us about is humility. It's trust in God and it's freedom from those kinds of attachments to money and to power, to pleasure that hold us back from living a life of discipleship. Remember the rich young man, he's living a virtuous life. He's asking the right questions. He goes to Jesus, what do I have to do to be happy? Jesus says, well, Follow the commandments. He says, I'm doing that. Jesus said, of course you are, but one thing is lacking. You're too attached to that money. Give it to the poor and then come and follow me. And what happens? He goes away sad. He turns his back on happiness. The Beatitudes are a core gospel teaching in the Sermon on the Mount about what the life of discipleship is about. Some people have very wisely said that the Beatitudes are a beautiful description of Mary. They're a beautiful description of Jesus, but they need to be a description also of us who aspire to be Jesus's disciples. One person who answered that call to live the blessedness of the Beatitudes in a very striking way was an Irishman by the name of Frank Duff, who died in Dublin in 1980. But a hundred years ago, as a member of the St. Vincent de Paul Society, working with the poor in Dublin, he was inspired to begin the Legion of Mary. Now, 
If any of you have been in Washington, I would urge you to visit our national shrine in the Immaculate Conception there, which has all these different chapels to the Blessed Mother that reflect our background as Americans because they go through all the different ethnic groups and have a, a chapel for each of those groups, the Vietnamese, the, uh, the different Eastern rites of the church, uh, the Ukrainians, uh, uh, the Germans, uh, Italians, uh, but there's also an Irish chapel. And I really like the Irish chapel because it's full of symbolism. They have the Blessed Mother seated in the middle of a fountain because in Ireland the holy wells were very important. They have the, the paintings from the Book of Kells on the walls and a number of other symbols that speak to us about Ireland is a missionary country. But one of the things that's there is the symbols of the Legion of Mary, founded a hundred years ago in Ireland by Frank Duff. Today, the Legion of Mary is probably the largest Catholic organization in the world. In the United States, our largest organization is the Knights of Columbus with two million knights. But worldwide, there are many more members of the Legion of Mary, particularly in countries like Korea, the Philippines, Brazil, all over Latin America, the Congo. Living the spirituality of St. Louis de Montfort and the true devotion. And here in our own parish, we venerate the memory of Mary McHale from the Legion of Mary, who for so many decades ran Santa Maria House, a shelter for homeless women here in the parish. In my youth, I was very involved in the Legion growing up in our parish. Uh, we had uh, a very active group of legionaries who every week we would have meetings and plan what our apostolate for the week was going to be. And we visited prisons, we visited uh, people in uh, the old folks' homes, shut-ins, uh, we took Catholic literature to the barber shops, the beauty shops, the bus station. Uh, we were always there to help the pastor in any kind of works of mercy or evangelization. And to me, it was a very, very important part of my own vocation. I am so grateful to the Legion of Mary for the extraordinary work that they have done everywhere in the world. When I was uh, a young man and heard about the missionaries like Adele Quinn in Africa and the thousands of members of the Legion of Mary in China who were imprisoned and martyred for their witness of the faith. And we're very blessed by this wonderful organization that is still trying to live the spirit of the Beatitudes and proclaim the gospel in word and deed by their wonderful and very quiet and hidden participation in the ministries of the church. So today as we celebrate this mass, all of us striving for happiness in our lives, uh, let us co contemplate Jesus' program for happiness in the Sermon on the Mount and these promises of happiness, of beatitude that he makes to us, remembering that the first one is that poverty in spirit, that having trust in the Lord rather than money and power and pleasure, that having the humility to live as Jesus did, trusting in the Lord and sharing the blessings that we have received with one another, particularly the blessing of our faith. We have listened to God's word and reflected upon it let us now make our response by praying together our profession of faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, let us confidently make known our needs to our Heavenly Father, who always hears our prayer with tenderness and love. For new sight and insight, that we may not be blinded by comfort or privilege to the struggles and suffering of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and the exploitation of the poor, that God will raise up those who are exploited in slave-like working conditions, are caught in human trafficking, and heal their wounds and lead them to a new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving, that those who have lost loved ones, their health, employment, or freedom, may know the presence of God who wipes away all tears and who brings light into every darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of Legion of Mary, Boston Senatos, living and deceased, and all sick members, we thank God for the gift of Legion of Mary to the Church with Mary and the Holy Spirit, receiving members for a hundred years. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will guide the homeless to shelter, the hungry to food, and the abused to places of safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Especially for all who have died, particularly our family and friends who have recently died, that they may live in the light and peace of God's presence forever. For Giovina De Paolo Antonelli, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer all of our prayers confidently through the intercession of Mary, the mother of the divine shepherd, as together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become, for those who do your will, the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own likeness and set humanity over the world in all its wonders to rule in your name over all you have created and for, to forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord, and so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Apollo, um, Apollonia, Giovanna Apollonia, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united through the Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace be with, with you. Peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus et sanguis Christi custodiant me in vitam et
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Of <clears throat> to uh, thank Cardinal Sean for celebrating this Mass for, in honor of the Legion of Mary. So too, we are all happy to wish you a very uh, special day today, um, Super Bowl Sunday. We hope you enjoy it, and Valentine's Day tomorrow. And in view of that, we have Coffee Sunday. So right in the vestibule of the church, we have a nice little celebration. It's a cold day, and so maybe you would like some hot chocolate. And more importantly, introduce yourselves to each other. I realize maybe some of you are in a witness protection program, but you can just say, I'm John Doe or Jane Doe, but please come back and uh, enjoy yourselves. And again, let's build up this community of faith. The Lord be with you. With your Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to Mass again. Thanks be to God. <laughs>